reason we played an Everson Griffin highlight is a, because he is fifth in the NFL in total pressures so far this year. He's been one of the best defensive ends in the entire league. Daniil Hunter is kind of showing him up. Who's number one in pressures. Uh, so the Vikings have gotten exactly what they dreamed of off the edge. We talked during the off season about the possibility of Everson falling off and playing the way he did in the second half of last season and what a problem that could be. Well, it hasn't been. And you spent some time, Courtney, writing about um, Everson Griffin and how he got himself back into shape. So tell me about that. Well, the movement training that he does, that he credits the explosiveness, being able to be violent yet graceful in his movements. I mean, it's kind of like... Same. Yeah. I mean, I knew that you kind of had that's something. how I do the show. Yeah. Violent and graceful at <laughs> the same time. Um, <laughs> as he's gotten older in age, and this was kind of where my, my thoughts started. It wasn't just, okay, he's coming off of a six year low five and a half sacks last season. They restructure him. People are doubting. Is he ever going to be the same player? I think that that always comes into question when guys hit the 30 threshold and continue to age. Um, and one thing I learned about this through speaking with a lot of different people, Mike Zimmer in particular, saying that they don't ever lose that violence edge of their game, especially when you're playing that position. I mean, if you look along the defensive line, Linville Joseph is probably still going to be as good as he is this year, next year, barring, you know, coming back from the knee injury because he's a big body. He's there to plug a hole. He's not there to, you know, to have the same type of athleticism, the finesse, the things that defensive ends are required to mm -hmm. do. Um, so I was really curious in figuring how can you sustain that? How is that something that, even with all these things stacked up against you, you have to take a pay cut. You have to hit a certain sack number, playing time, et cetera, et cetera. Like, how do you stay so explosive? And so the biggest thing I can tell you from this story, at least what I've learned, is that he's not a guy who can just beat a guy around the edge anymore. He's not 24 years old. Mm -hmm. um, he's not the same type of player he was five, six years ago, or, you know. But he is, does, the reason he looks like the 2017 Pro Bowl self of him, because as he's aged, he's need to learn like he's needed to learn how to, through the movement training that he does, control the setup based on what the matchup is, what the problem on the field, because this is all from representative learning, uh, where if you present me with a problem, I have to go into my movement toolbox and find different ways to solve it. Because no mm. two problems are the same. David Bakhtiari isn't going to have the same setup on Everson Griffin every single snap. Right. So it's it's a matter of, you know, kind of tapping into that bandwidth, figuring out different ways to beat that problem every single time. Um, so it's controlling time. It's controlling space. It's not just saying, hey, I'm going to run past that guy. Like, because you can't do that against David Bakhtiari at this stage of your career. But, you know, or other left tackles who are as skillful as he is. It's a matter of using the movement that has made him so explosive to where he's at, multiple Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl nominations under his belt. Um, and where he's at right now, Mike Zimmer saying this might be the best version of Everson ever. Um, it's honing those things. And, and the one thing I really liked from getting to kind of witness what a in-season session looks like for the movement training when he goes in there on Fridays, he's doing animal flow, which there's a video um, at the top of ESPN.com. It's watching him kind of just like, there's no real script to it. It's a lot of freedom of movement, which I think is so interesting hmm. when we think about how structured everything is. And Everson has even said he feels like a robot. And so, okay, your mind goes, I feel like a robot. Well, does he mean that he's you know, doing the same thing? Like ABC shows up, then he has to do DEF. Like, no, I think a lot of that has to do with the creativity that he has within his movements to, you know, be, be tested, be, you know, you're not running cone drills in these sessions. You're not doing, the ladders you're not doing stuff that honestly doesn't really help you like these are real life scenarios that he's being put through and i think that that's the reason that he's so successful because he's seen so many of these things play out in games where he's got such a wide array of tools that he can use at 30 almost 32 years old like he's probably performing the best that he's had just because of the experience that he's had this is fascinating to me from the perspective of how everson came into the league, but had to overcome stuff early on where mm -hmm. it didn't look good for him. Sure. When he first got here, he was a fourth round pick, not because of talent. He was an unbelievable the talent. Off the field stuff. Right. And then he gets things together. Mike Zimmer shows up. That's the best thing that ever could have happened to Everson Griffin. They signed him to a contract, a very big contract when he was a situational rusher and then make him a full-time starter. He gets 12 sacks his first year and takes off. 
as a star at that position. But then last year, midway through the season, I guess it was early on in the season, yeah. he has his mental health issue. He goes away, he comes back, not the same type of guy, finishes with five and a half sacks. And if you were laying down bets, is he going to get back to double digit sacks? You would have said probably not. I mean, the guy is 32 years old, and I think it speaks to a couple of things. He is just a different kind of dude. I mean, in These terms are of his God given right? talents, yeah. like that stuff is what Mike Zimmer is referring to. That part doesn't go away. The mm -hmm. athleticism might. And that's why you can't just like you said, you can't just run past the guy anymore. Yeah. Um, but the explosiveness, the, the, the way that he gets in his stance and is able to, you know, truly explode out of it. That's something that's just never going to go away. Like either you have that or you don't. Mm -hmm. Brian Robeson, like when he was retired, when he was like kind of forced to, and didn't retire, he, he was pushed out essentially. Right. Um, when he was getting up there in age, I think people were looking at it saying, hey, he's losing some of the things that made him such yeah. a great pass rusher in the different year, like earlier years of his prime. Like, I remember we sat here talking about, is Everson going to have to become a situational pass rusher sure, again? Yeah. And that just seemed like the logical answer because so often you don't see things like this. Yes, it these guys have longer primes, I think. That's why you can see guys who are 33, yeah. 34, 35. Justin Houston is a great exactly. example of that. Um, but other than that, I mean, I look at this as like he's an, he's the anomaly here. Like, yes, those things like other players have those same type of traits and will probably have as long careers. I mean, he's been with the Vikings his, the entirety of his 10 year NFL career. And the fact that you have people saying this is the best version we've seen of him, like what's next? Can this be sustained? Is he going to be somebody who's 35 years old? Um, and that's when he's looking at the end of his career, not at 32 next year. Right. Because we're going to be saying after this year, when he becomes a free agent because of the way his contract yeah. voids, he, he should they bring him back? He can choose to be a free agent. He can still Which play you out. always do, right? Yeah, you, I don't. No agent would say, no, 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 just stick with that contract after you've gotten 12 or 14 sacks yeah. or something. Uh, I was just looking through the all-time sack list for the Vikings, and the only people that are ahead of Everson Griffin are John Randall, Chris Dolman, and Jared Allen, end list. And he is within striking distance of Jared Allen if it was next year. He's mm -hmm. 12 sacks behind Jared Allen. Is Everson Griffin, is he ring of honor level, do you think? Wow. Um, a guy who has been here through a yeah. lot of success. Why not? I mean, he's been here for 10 years yeah. and has been a, just like a I don't know, stationary is not the right word. Centerpiece been, of centerpiece. the defense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. A staple, staple, you could That's also say. I was, looking yeah. at, I was looking for that one. Um, No, I mean, to me, he's absolutely part of that because of the sustainability aspect, the fact that this has been going on. I mean, five and a half sacks is not a bad season for somebody. Last year, that was a six-year low for him. Mm -hmm. So – Look at what he did when he was hitting those double digit sack numbers from what 2013 all the way on to 2017 it is, you know, the big Pro Bowl year. We were that's when he had a career high. Like, that's impressive. And I think that that's something that probably will be going when you look at all the pieces at the end of the day and determine is this a guy that was a franchise staple? I think the answer is a clear yes. Off of this team alone, there are going to be a lot of players where that conversation is had, I'm sure. I'm not sure if Everson would get it based on what he's done right now, if they re-sign him and he's got a couple more years of this mm -hmm. and they're successful, then there's a really great possibility for him. But Harrison Smith, there's a good sure. possibility. Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen, Delvin Cook is very early in that process, but even he has a chance. Kirk Cousins has a chance yeah. at that if he takes them anywhere. If he gets um, them to the Super Bowl, ring of honor without question. Yeah. Even if he left after the yes. next contract and decided he didn't want to stay here. If you get your team to the Super Bowl, then you're probably in that because look at Fran Franz Arkington never won a Super Bowl and he's in the ring of honor. Yeah. Uh, like, and, and of course it's going to take great play from sure. cousins to get them there too. But I, I think that that is interesting with Everson Griffin of just his career path and how it took a pretty huge dip. And there was very good reason to think probably not going to bounce back here. And then um, he ultimately has, and it's been a huge part of why this defense is even decent without him. I think this is a bad defense, honestly, because they can't cover anybody and they don't get any interior rush. Uh, we were just talking in the break how Anthony Barr has uh, been targeted a lot in the passing game underneath uh, to some success by opposing teams. What's really held them down is the fact that Daniil Hunter and Everson Griffin get after the quarterback on nearly every other play. And then, uh, you know, 
that's had a huge impact in the red zone. Yeah, too. and if if you just had Daniil Hunter on on his side of the defensive line, and you had Stephen Weatherly, and you use that as a rotation, that was one of the solutions that we thought of before free agency last year. Okay, if you let Everson Griffin go, this happens that you'd have Anthony Barr. This is before he resigned and. and all of that. Mm-hmm. I remember we talked about this. It's like, okay, is it Steven Weatherly? Is it a rotation of him and Anthony Barr, maybe a Fadio Denebo? Like thinking about just how you would hold down that position um at, at left defensive end. And I think that there's reason to believe now um that they that the signs were there that Everson was never going to have a, a drop off. Maybe we didn't see it from like a logical perspective, just thinking sure. about father time and the things like that and age, huge but yep. it's, it, it really did. Um, you know, it, ha- it had a good chance of happening regardless. And, you know, even if he was going to be a situational pass rusher, I think he would probably still be having the same type of success that he does now, even if he was just coming in on third down and things like that. Um, if you want to give Courtney's very well done piece a read, you can go to your Twitter where you tweeted it out also at ESPN.com yep. on the Vikings page. It is called uh, Vikings. Everson Griffin finds balance by learning when to turn off. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, I want to,